Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm and I'm going to spend just a few minutes uh, introducing you to a new Microsoft tool, utility, app, whatever you want to call it. It's very specific to Windows 10 and just as a, just a quick note, you have to make sure you have the current uh, Microsoft update for, in this case, May 2020. I'm sure as time goes on it'll just be improved, but as of today these options will work. If you have the previous one, I think it was October, uh, the command will be there but not all the options uh, will work for you so that's step one is make sure you have the current Microsoft update applied to your computer second thing you have to make sure that your command prompt is uh, elevated privileges or run as administrator or whatever you understand that to be and you know for a fact that works when you see here it says administrator command prompt then you're pretty well in business down here, the path, the default path for most systems will be Windows System 32. If you're in a corporate environment, you could have changed that, and, and I'm not going to get into that, but just so you know, you need an administrator command prompt or elevated privileges or, or however you want to call that. So just a, a quick reference for everybody, because uh, I always like to give credit where credit is due. This all started uh, because I always read this uh, website called bleepingcomputer.com and they came out with an article saying Windows 10 quietly got a built-in network sniffer and how to use it and that kind of got my attention uh, but I noticed it was kind of limited to what I'm used to and then again I'm used to using the net sh trace command uh, and or of course Wireshark and other types of uh, protocol analyzers so I kind of just ignored it but now with this latest one uh, they updated the article and guess what it really got my attention so I thought I'd play with it show you a kind of quick start on how to get going some of the things I'm going to show you are echoed in the article and some are, are not included in the article so I thought why not let's just run through it real quick so here we are at the command prompt for the people who are not familiar with their command prompt a lot of people aren't comfortable with it I wanted to show you uh, how to move around a little bit for example uh, I want to change directory so that's CD and I'm going to go to my desktop. So user profile is a variable set. Whoops, profile if I can type. User profile. And then I'm just simply going to do a backslash desktop. Enter. Now I'm at my desktop. So this saves me the trouble of having to, uh, you know, CD, user CD home CD desktop that kind of thing and that takes me right there I just want to create a folder called packetmon so MD for make directory and PKTMON we'll just type that in oh my god it's gonna be one of those days folks <laughs> so there we are so I've made the directory now I'm gonna change directory PKTMON there we go now I'm in the folder, so everything I do as far as packet captures and whatnot goes is going to go into that folder, and that's very helpful because I don't want to have to go hunting for it, uh, and I sure as heck don't want it in my System32 folder for just a whole variety of reasons I'm not going to get into. So now that I'm in there, uh, the first thing we do with any protocol analyzers is, is interrogate our adapters, and even with Wireshark, when I did a T-Shark or the dump cap things, I'm always checking out my adapters first. So PKT MON. I'm just going to just type that in just for a moment. It shows me kind of a help screen, if you will. The help screens are pretty good. Um, I always wish there was more detail, but just for the purposes of what it does, it works fairly well. So, Pacamon, COMP, and then from there, we're going to type list. Enter. And it shows me the adapter. Now, this adapter is my active adapter that's being used. If you don't see it, uh, or you want an idea of all the adapters you could capture from a dash I will take care of that so I'm gonna press enter on that and you'll see there's a lot more stuff on that screen I'm just gonna drag this guy here for a moment and I'm just gonna stretch this out just so you got more real estate to read there we go and the reason why I do that is because sometimes the adapter you're using is not active right now like a VPN adapter that sort of thing and you just want to note this the ID number so ID in this case was 2 and that's if I wanted to use this WAN mini port adapter but if I just go back to my list there's my gigabit Ethernet adapter there's my MAC address that gives me the ID number in this case it's 9 it's gonna be important in just a moment so just remember that 
Uh, of course, it tells me a bunch of other stuff, which it doesn't really matter right now for the purposes of this video. Now, the next thing is we want to start a capture. So the first thing we have to understand is the defaults. And the defaults when you do a packet capture is all adapters. And you might not want that. If you did have more than one adapter, Wi-Fi, two Ethernet, or there was multiple adapters being used at that time, you'd want to pick one. And that's the dash C parameter. And I'm going to put all these parameters in the write-up, so don't worry about trying to write this stuff down. But for the purposes of what we're doing, I want to just capture from all adapters. So I'm going to do a PKT mon start double dash. It's one of the few ones where there's a double dash there. ETW. A uh, few things about the defaults packet size. The defaults 128 bytes. I want to prove or disprove if that is the case. You know me, I'm always checking that stuff out. So I'm leaving that alone. Uh, the file name, the default is PKT mon.etl uh, and that's I'm going to leave alone as well and the maximum file size the defaults 512 megabytes for the file size that I want to change I want to see if that works so dash s for size and I'm going to pick two all right uh, that's it that's it so real simple enter boom and you can see it says that it started that's where it's putting the file the default name is pktmon.etl uh, the logging mode is circular, which all that means is first in, first out, and the size is 2 meg. So when this is done, and this PC is, is a pretty busy computer, so I know for sure that by now 2 meg should be done, um, you, you'll know when it's done when you do one of two things. So this is where the fun starts. I'm going to open up my file explorer. Here we go. And whoops. I just shoved my whole screen off to the side. I didn't want to do that. So from here you can see there's my ETL file being created. And it's 16 meg right now, not 2. Even though this did say 2. So let's stop the capture. P-K-T-M-O-N stop. OK, so it's done. right? And no events are lost. That's good to see. And if I come back here, it's 32 meg, not 2, 32. Hmm. I don't like that. I'm going to have to look into that, but for now I don't like that. So the other thing we're going to do is convert this to a PCAP format, and that's what Wireshark or other protocol analyzers like to use as well. So we'll quickly do that. So now that it's done, if we just type DIR, we'll see. There you go. It is 30, well, 33 meg, that ETL file. So we would like to convert that. So we're going to PKTMON. Just hit enter again. Just as you get used to it, just get familiar with what commands are available. And from there, you'll notice that one of the options is PCAPNG. This is the newer option. Uh, the previous version did not have this in it. So you might not see it if your Windows uh, updates aren't up to date. So again, PKTMON. This time we're going to type PCAP. PCAP. And G. This time I'm going to type the word help just to show you what it looks like. And you can see it tells me packetmon pcap ng log.etl and then dash o and whatever. So input, output file, pretty straightforward stuff. So I'm going to simply type pktmon.etl and then dash o. I'll do the same thing, why not? Dot pcap ng. Enter. Bing, bada boom. Processing. And, and what I want to see is when it's done, is it still 2 meg? I mean, 33 meg and change, or is it magically 2 meg, which I kind of doubt, but we'll see. And you can see now the PCAPNG file is 9.2 meg. So that 2 meg size thing, I don't know if that's a bug or there's some other thing you should do, but I, I, I would doubt that. I think that may be a bug. So now I'm going to type packet mon pcapng. That's going to launch Wireshark. There we go. So let me just drag that over here. And that should just load. There we go. The reason why I want to load that in Wireshark is obviously I want to make sure it works. So it did work. The other thing I want to check is that packet length because I told you the packet size by default is 128 bytes. And sometimes you want the full size packet, sometimes you want 128. But in this case, if I pick a, there you go, this one is 1514. If you take a look at the header here, it says 
1514 on the wire, 280, 128 bytes captured. So there you go. So that default does in fact work. So I want to possibly do more articles, but I'm going to ask you if you think it's um, good and helpful, then I will proceed with more articles and more options, features, and I'll test them out for you, make sure stuff works, and that kind of jazz. So leave your comments, and I look forward to hearing back from you. Have a good day. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.